Well, uh, I had a great influence from my maternal uncle. Uh, when I was just three years and he was nine years, uh, he lost his dad. And when he lost his dad, uh, I first time I saw a dead body at home. And I uh, couldn't understand what has happened. And uh, only after about one, two days, I did understand that he's passed away and I can't see my grand grandfather. And this guy, when he lost his dad, became more mature. He behaved like a 15-year-old boy. He started taking a lot of decisions on behalf of the family. He never looked like a nine-year-old boy. Now, this guy uh, grew up, and when he was about 13, 14 years, and I was about seven or eight years, he'd come back and tell me that uh, we need to start some business. We need to uh, employ about 10,000, 20,000 people and that I should do engineering in a particular field, he will do engineering in a particular field. So it was all that uh, kids talking about business, not knowing what business is all about. And uh, when he finished his engineering, I was about to join, I, I was in 10th or something, and he said, you need to study well and get into engineering. And my plans are working. Look, we've been planning for the last, from my 13 years I've been planning, I'm 22, I'm getting into IIT, I'm going to be in IIT for uh, learning about welding, and he joined his M.Tech in IIT, and I was there in, uh, in, in my schooling. There was an age gap of about seven, eight years. And I finished my PU and joined my regional engineering college in Durgapur. He was very, very happy. Every day for me would be to talk to him, say good morning to him, um, meet him up very often, spend a lot of time together trying to explore a new world, which only both of us knew. It was in 1976 when I joined my engineering and he was happy that plans are all right and not on paper but in the minds of both of us and uh, in 1977 when I was in this first, second year engineering um, I, I returned to Chennai for a short stay and when I yeah, was at home he spent the whole night with me and said morning I'm going for a jogging and uh, he got married at that time he got married, 1977, 26 years got married and uh, he said I'm going for a marathon run and therefore I need to practice, um, he was a marathon runner, so he said I need to go for a long run. So went for a long run and then uh, he came back and all that I heard was he fainted and fell in the bathroom and died. So I lost a very close relative which is my maternal uncle, uh, had a great dream um, that I'm going to become a great entrepreneur and he's going to lead me. And this actually brought me into great depression. I couldn't understand many things of life. I didn't understand uh, what was happen in, happening in my second year of engineering because it was the deepest shock that I could ever imagine in my life. It took about five, six months to recover. And after that five, six months, I, I gave a different signal to my mind saying, why should I think that somebody is dead? And why, why can't I think that he's still living and guiding me? And um, after that, I used to spend a lot of time with Prabha, although he's dead. I used to talk to him, um, you know, have conversations, try to take his advice, sit, sit silently and listen to my own mind and think it's Prabha's advice and move forward. And then when I finished my engineering, it was the thought that I need to be an entrepreneur, but I had no skill of becoming an entrepreneur. Two things that would have best suited me was to become a professor in a college, or the second one was to take up a good job as an executive. Then I did my MBA from REC, and Bharat Dasan University it was at that time, then it split into a separate university. It was Bharat Dasan University where I did my MBA. And when I was in the third semester, I told my dad uh, that I've got a job with Kelvinator and I've just joined, worked there for about one, two months, then went to my boss and said, I want to resign, I want to become an entrepreneur. And my boss asked me, what's the capital you have and what's the uh, business idea that you have? I said, I don't have both. But then I've been guided by my maternal uncle who's died so many years back. And he said, I need to be an entrepreneur. So I'm going to find out a way out and become an entrepreneur. So I wrote to a lot of banks saying, can you, can you give me some sick unit which I can divide? Because sick units come without any cost. Some banks sent me some projects, and then there was a family unit which was which was sick. And I told the family, why don't you give me this unit? It is sick, already sick, there's cash loss, five years. You want to close down the unit, there's nothing there. The factory had uh, nothing, it didn't have much of machinery. 
uh, poor, the workmen were demotivated. Uh, there was no leadership there. And I went to the customer. The customer had a lot of problems to talk about. So I asked them one final question, why do you want to do business with this company? They said, no, the quality of the product is very good. So I, I took that particular cue and started working on the company. So moved from 10 workmen, we continued to make losses for the next 3-4 years. And in that 3-4 years, I made significant difference in the way SMEs work. What is it? In, 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 in any SME, uh, if it's a profitable SME, there is always a management workmen divide. The management is looking at how do I improve profits. And the laborer on the other side is feeling that how do I get better wages. So any change that has to be brought into the industry will never be accepted. Because the workman feels that you know they're going to squeeze work out of me. And the management feels the more I, uh, I take the work out of my labor and my profit is going to go up. Now for the first time when I was making loss, I thought, why not I study why people behave in a particular pattern? Okay. So when all that I did was I visited all the ten houses and and had meals with them, spent time with them, trying to find out what is this aspiration in life? Hmm. What does this fellow want in life? What do I do if I have to make him meet his aspiration? And the, in, in their mind, they've been tutored that that you need to rebel with the management. <laughs> that's when you grow, and that's how industry will perform. And um, and what I did was continuously try to understand the psyche of the worker. Yeah. And all that I could understand is that this guy did not have the parents like the way we have. He is not being brought up in the way in the way we've been brought up. He is not gone to a school which is uh, the kind of school we've gone to. He is not gone to a college the way we've gone to a college. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have peers, he doesn't have superiors the way we have. Therefore, his thinking pattern is different and the way behavioral pattern also is different. Now, the company is also making a loss. Why don't we all meet together out in some hill station, sleep together in one area, in a, in a dormitory. All of us will sleep together and we will have a mentor for us. And the mentor will tell us what does the employee want to achieve in the year 2000, which was 8 years, okay. 92 to 2000. Okay. What would he like his family to be in yeah. 2000? Okay. What would he like his company to be? What products would the company be doing in 2000? So there are three, three different topics. Most of them had one single agenda. That I'm going to be a welder here, my son is going to be a welder, okay. perennially we're going to be welders. Okay. So the thought process was, if I'm going to be a welder, my son is going to be a welder, my grandson is going to be a sweeper, where is the change going to happen to this family? So we need to rebel. Okay. 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 So then we took the cue. We said, we started a thing called Gen Next program okay. in our company. Okay. What is the Gen Next program? Gen Next program is taking the small children, trying to understand what they really want to become. Mm -hmm and giving them a mentor from Chennai, from okay. Bombay or Delhi, no cost. So this family felt they connected to a, a educated family. Okay. So these fellows started feeling that they won up with respect to other workmen in the community. Okay. Now I've got a doctor as a friend, yeah. I've got an engineer as a friend, yeah. I've got a chartered accountant as my as my mentor. Yeah. If I if I listen to my chartered accountant, then my son can become yeah, a chartered. Okay. okay. So this Gen Next program, Bonded the, 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 the producers. I don't call them workers, I call them producers. Yeah. So I changed everything. So I used to call them producers. And they bonded between what what uh, uh, was required by the company. They felt that if, if the company achieves whatever then they get want, it. they will get what they want. It's life is simple. Twenty-four hours available, eight hours goes for sleep. 8 hours somebody is working for you, yeah. the remaining 8 hours can the company take care of that fellow. Yeah. So we brought respect to this guy, we made the children uh, belong to the society and and the the wife, the spouse started talking about hey, the, 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 there is some connectivity between what is happening in the company at home and therefore it is very important that we make the company into a bigger level. 
So these guys started saying that um, uh, in the year 2000, we would like to win, win the national award for the company. We're sinking. And they're talking about winning national award eight years down the line. Okay. They're, they're saying about they do the map of India and put candles all over uh, the Indian map. And they said our vehicles must be sold across the nation. Okay. In all dealership it must be sold. Then they started talking about a lot of products. And when people are eager to learn, if you're able to give them solution, then implementation is far more easier. So from strategy, people waste a lot of time between strategy and execution. Yeah. Now, if, if your execution strategy is, is fairly clear, yeah. then you are able to implement far more things than yeah. any one of your competitors. So uh, when we were hungry to learn and implement, we suddenly started getting orders because we'll implement one order at a faster pace. And then there'll be several companies, several executives saying that I tried it in this company and I got it implemented. Then another guy from Leyland Ennor or another place would say, try it out. And somebody would say, give me this product. So from no visitor for about 10 years, we had at least 20 visitors per day. 10 years, we didn't have any visitor. Okay. There was no inquiry. Okay. But after that, solid inquiries, solid uh, work. And then we moved to about 300, 400 people in 2000 and made lots of products with market share of 60%, 70% and 80%. A lot of financial discipline and HR activities. So, if you want me to talk about HR practices, there's four E that I can talk about. Yeah. The first E we talk about is enlighten. Okay. okay? Now, when we recruit an employee, we first check on the aspiration of the employee. What is his aspiration in life? Mm -hmm. Okay, and whether this company can help him reach his aspiration. That's the first E. Mm -hmm. The second E that we do is called the engage. Uh, you will find many people do not want to resign because their boss is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or you want to resign because your boss is not good. Yes. So uh, you want to stay connected. You want yeah. to enjoy that everyday life. It's not for the salary that you're working. True. You're working because you 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 know that your boss is energized. Yeah. You know that your boss can take you to the next level. Yeah. So that engage, we look at at and whether we can celebrate his birthday. Yeah. Whether we can stay connected to the the spouse. Yeah. The Gen Next program is something like that. Yeah. We have a sports program running every year. I mean, engage. It's doing things like enabling that particular employee carry out with his hobby or his extracurricular activities. That brings in the smile in that particular fellow. So engaging is connecting in sports, marriage, events. We've got about 30, 40 of the engaging techniques. Okay. okay. So we try and see whether we've engaged with him, with yeah. his family. Yeah. The third part is called the enable. Yeah. The enable part is actually teaching him skills. Okay. Which is technical skill. The fourth part is the excite part. Okay. Excitement. That is catch him doing things right. Yeah. And find out whether we can celebrate. He's given a good suggestion. Okay. He's improved the productivity. Yeah. He's uh, he's uh, he's changed the process line. Yeah. So those are all excitement things. So if we can catch them doing things right, uh, they're motivated. So they they they, they want to do it repeatedly the same thing. So if you have the four process, which uh, uh, we have uh, made many presentations uh, in many of the management institutes, which is the four E's, enlighten, engage, enable, and yes. decide. There's something called an outlook for an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. What is it? Deep dive and ask yourself whether you become an entrepreneur because you want to pay, you want to make some additional wealth, mm. or you want to have wealth, accumulate wealth. Outlook actually sends a signal to the rest of the people in your organization. Okay. If the outlook is very weak, the rest in the army mm. don't know what to do. Okay. Okay. They can't know. They they're constantly watching you. They're yeah. Constantly looking at you for direction. Yeah. And if they don't get the direction, they're confused. They just do while doing the routine work. And yeah. Doing work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you get that outlook right then you will not be talking about small little problems like I'm not getting my cash flow, I'm not getting this, I'm not getting that. You will find a lot of solutions for all these problems okay. because the outlook is strong. Now when you get the outlook clear, 
many of the problems uh, become actually solution. Yeah. If, if, if you have, a, if you have, if you say that I'm not, I'm not getting loan, mm -hmm. it means that your product is not performing well in the market. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the loan is just a symptom. Okay. The problem is lying somewhere else. Okay. That you don't have a great idea. Yeah. Or you're not able to sell the great idea. Yeah. Or you're not able, you, you, you need the idea and the way to articulate that idea. Yeah. Steve Jobs is not one inventor alone. Yeah. He could articulate it in many ways yeah. and connect to the public. If you are a great entrepreneur, yeah. then you will have one ability for sure, yeah. which is never give up. Okay, because uh, an entrepreneur who is strong on his ideas, strong on execution, will never give up. He may rest, but he will never give up. He may bend, but you will not be able to break. So bend, overcome the curve, but never give up. This is something that you will have to be. You have to stay longer. Yeah. The longer you stay, you will find solutions to your problem. And the office typically, I uh, spend a lot on the financial management of, of each of the company's performance. Um, I look at uh, the projections and where we are um, with respect to that company. So one hour is spent on the financial, financials of every company, which is whether it's a retail or whether it's a manufacturing. And then uh, I have a small meeting with my staff, wherever I am, on what I have done uh, in the last week, if I have not met them in the last one week, what have I done? And uh, probably ask them about any clarifications that they require from my end, I give them the clarifications. I also tell them about uh, what has happened to the company in the last few days or a month, and uh, what is the competition about. And then I also teach them about uh, how to energize somebody or uh, take a some, some simple problem and solve that. So that meeting can be about half an hour to 45 minutes. And then I get on to my replies on mails and all that. And beyond that, uh, the afternoon work will be on um, uh, reviewing with, with the departments or visiting some of my project sites, uh, visiting the retail outlets and, uh, and, and trying to understand what customers really want. That could be the afternoon evening. And I also take part uh, in a lot many activities. So MMA activity, a little bit of CIA activity, a little bit on sports and uh, the NGO activity. Now, why am I doing all this? The reason why I'm doing all this, as I told you earlier, is, uh, uh, is the purpose for which we are there. And I've never found that uh, uh, wealth making is very important for me. Uh, I've never felt it from the beginning of my entrepreneurial career. I've always felt that uh, that it would flow or it, it can come in any form, uh, but you must enjoy your everyday work. Mm. And second thing is, uh, is uh, I love uh, uh, my own employees. I in fact tell them, I in fact have one person who's told many of my employees if they are highly talented, that they should not stay in my company a little longer. And I've always told them that uh, three, four year, years experience in my company is more than enough and that they should branch out into larger companies. So um, I love uh, interacting with each, each one of them. Mm -hmm. I celebrate every employee's birthday. Mm -hmm. So there's so much of energy and, and different things to do throughout the day. tell you is um, life is a long journey that uh, mm, you can actually mm, be like the soda bottle where the gas fizzes out in, 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 in a few seconds. Look at a cricketer. Uh, many cricketers don't uh, stand a four-year test or a five-year test. They start off very well but they are not able to perform for 15-20 years. Yeah. Can you learn a little bit from Tandulka who could start at 16 and go up to 38-39? Uh, every day he's learning and every day he's performing. Yeah. Uh, he can be a role model uh, for any youngster because uh, you, you might peak at the age of 35. Are you going to stop at that age or are you going to have another dream? Can you dream at the age of 60 for a new career? 
Can yeah. you dream at the age of 70 for a new career? Think that you're going to live for 100 years or 120 years. Yeah. Um, and, and feel that I need that energy. Therefore, spend on your health, uh, spend on the right people. Um, you need the right connect in your life. Um, you come out of good schools and good colleges. Uh, the connect is very important. And uh, every day in your life, ask yourself, have I helped three people today? And if you can help the three people every day, I hear, I hear even from psychiatrists that you would be the most positive person in this world.